Say that, say that aloud. God bless you. When there is no vision, it is said the people perish. But in our time, when there is no vision, the people change parish. <laughs> Hello. Ministers, are we communicating? As iron sharpens iron, so does a friend sharpen the countenance of a friend. That's what we are here for. And there are some people, by the grace of God, who will be watching this on internet, on TV, on TV or video, whatever. It's the same thing that is said to everybody. Every minister, if you don't hear the voice of God, every minister knows the voice of God speaking. Doesn't matter who is presenting the message. You know that this is God talking to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know when I listen to a man of God speaking, it doesn't matter how bad I feel when the rebuke is shooting me like bullets. Yes, I know that this is God talking to me. But in most cases, ministers try to build a defense. They try to justify themselves. They try to present reason. Am I talking? Mm -hmm. A blind cannot lead a blind. Listen to me. It is better for people to jump out of your ministry and look for where there is no blind leading. Where the leader is not blind. Where he has focus. Where he is giving them exactly what they need. Imagine somebody is driving and very soon you see trees falling on the car you know he's hitting trees and trees are falling on the car and and subsequently you realize that you have a little space to escape and you are still sitting in that car in fact it means that your own blindness is worse than you. do you understand it means you are that's exactly what is happening in the church you see leaders all what they complain in church is there the people stay here amen when the rest are living, don't leave a man. Why should I stay here, a man? <laughs> Leadership calls for consistent development, personal development. At one point in time in Africa, I don't see it here. In fact, in Africa, there are more than 25 gospel stations on satellite. If you, all you need to do is to buy your satellite dish free to air. If you have your satellite dish and, you know, once it's installed in your home, you have multiple, you have more than 500 ministers you, can, you have access to, to listen to. So, in a situation like that, that means if you don't have anything to say, if you don't upgrade, your members are already listening to... to, to do you understand what I'm talking about? That's exactly how we grew in ministry. Because it became a challenge. Why? Because the people are longing. They want to grow. So if they come to church and you are bringing them lower than they had gone, they see you as a problem. They see you as an obstacle to their destiny. Hello? Let me say this again. It is very important as a minister, whether in a group in the church or over the commission that the Lord has called you to lead. Ask yourself, always tell yourself this. Secularly, in companies, when a new employee is hired, what is the probationary period? Three months. Three months. Good. So tell yourself, Every new member that comes under my leadership, if for three months their lives are not getting better, it means I'm not doing enough. Do you understand? Because they have the right to leave. If for three months a new worker is hired and that worker is, is input is not satisfactory, they'll send the worker off, right? The same in church. If you are a leader, don't look at the people as a problem. You see, the portion of scripture that said the sheep are scattered, 
They are like sheep without a shepherd. I would have expected that Jesus would have started pointing at the sheep and calling out their sins. See, you people look at your sins. But what did he look at? He pointed to the shepherd. In most cases, when the sheep is catching, we look at the sheep as the problem. <laughs> Am I communicating? But look at Jesus. Even the woman with the, with the, with, with, who was caught in adultery brought to Jesus. Do you know why Jesus did not condemn her? Why? Because she had no shepherd. So why would I be condemning the sheep when the shepherd has not done his role? Most of the times, we end up killing the sheep but not playing our role. And we think we, what we are doing to the sheep is what the Lord has told us to do. Listen to me. To whom much is given, much is required. Everybody desires to be in leadership. Oh, why have been in this church for this number of time? Why are they not? They are making people leader. They don't see me. How much are you putting in for the growth of the work? Some people think their input is only the finance, the offering they give. And when they give offering in church, they want to question. In fact, they want to see where the offering ends. Did God call you as overseer of finance in that church? Or you appointed yourself? Then you have become a problem to the church. <laughs> Hello? Say, because I put. And when the man of God who is overseeing a work is commenting about the finances of the church, people will grumble. Why is he always talking about money? Especially people in leadership. They pass a bad spirit down to those who are just coming in. And so, before you realize it, the newcomers speak the same spirit. Let me shock you. How did Jesus know that the widow put a mite? He was standing by. That means he was examining, counting the money. As he was entering the money basket, he was looking. <laughs> That means money in ministry is important to Jesus. So when the call for finance, raising of finances and projects in church and leaders are relaxed behind, that is to say, they are saying we choose the area where we serve the Lord. They choose where they serve the Lord, not the Lord choosing for them how he wants to be served. Not to overlabel that point. Verse 40. Luke 6 40. Somebody read it for us, please. A pupil is not above the teacher. A, a pupil. Uh -huh. a, a what? A pupil. A disciple, a disciple is not above his master. Okay. A disciple is not above. Okay. My brother, come. Come. Thank you. A disciple is not above his master. You can keep your Bible down in the microphone. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Thank you. I gave you an example, a glaring example. A disciple is not above his what? Master. A disciple is not above his master. That is to say, as long as you develop yourself, the church or the sheep can only grow as tall as you are. They can't grow above your hand spiritually. I don't know if I communicate. As a minister, the people under your ministration, the people under the people you are called to serve, they can't grow. I'm not talking about physical height. Talking about spiritual height. They can't get to a height. If you yourself, you have not gotten to that height. Except a teacher from outside is teaching them. 
and in our time, what I have realized is this. Stand, stand. I don't know who is taller. He's taller than me. Good. This is what happens in our churches nowadays. When we realize that the sheep is growing taller, what we try to do is to bend them down. And yet, we are not growing taller. One, everybody wants to improve. Even the newborn baby wants to grow. The same thing spiritually. People want to meet up with what God has for them. And if you are becoming a stumbling block, if I continue to suppress this young man, what do you expect him to do? He will move. Am I talking to somebody? God bless you. So, because a, a servant is never above his master, as he will know that as long as he continues to be under me, he will never go higher than my height because I've become a dwarf shepherd. There are dwarf shepherds in the ministry. They are not growing and they don't want anybody to grow above their height. <laughs> I hope you are not one of them. I pray I will never become one of them. Amen. Listen to me. In ministry, I have learned a lesson that children become an improvement of their parents. If to say, I'm leading, assuming this is a congregation I'm leading, you are all the sheep under me, assuming. If I end at five steps, you have no right to end before five steps. Five steps become your springboard. Do you understand? That's why Jesus said, greater works. Why? Because I am your foundation. So where I end, you can stand on that foundation and go higher. So, leaders who don't have ability to raise succession, they are a problem to the church. Always ask yourself, if I am not there today, is there anybody that can handle the affairs? Of the ministry. Ministry begins with leadership training. Your first Christians, the first people that God sends your way, you impart them with the vision. You start raising them in line with the vision. If you fail to do that, they will give you a vision. They will try to propose to you, listen and listen attentively. Because people want to contribute, right? If there is nothing to contribute to support, they will give you something so that you will contribute and support. Instead of you giving them something to support, they, <laughs> they will give you something to support and yet you are the leader. Am I communicating? That's ministry. Look behind you. Look at yourself. Look at the work the Lord has given to you. Develop yourself. Look at somebody who has gone ahead of you, who is doing it better, and learn from that person. Nobody is ever too old to learn, and nobody has known all. Am I talking? There is nobody who has known all. If you say you have known all, that means you equate yourself with Jesus Christ, and that is falsehood. Do you understand? Bible says we have been given in parts. We know in parts and we prophesy in parts. So your part may not be creating as much impact. Learn from others. Why you grow? You grow. That's why I said develop yourself. Learn from those who have gone ahead of you. Once you learn, you'll be able to grow the ship under you. And switch now to the other side. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, on the other hand, there is a problem with most people who are growing under us. Let me look at the ministry of Jesus. The Bible says about Jesus that when he came, like I said, when you start your ministry, what you have to do first is raise leadership. And first of all, when Jesus 
had to start ministry after in being introduced by the father what did he do he went into the wilderness he was led the bible says he was led by the spirit into the wilderness and what was he doing in the wilderness he was sharpening himself for 40 days and 40 nights there was an interaction every minister has to spend time with the father because there are issues about the ministry that the father will reveal to you most of the times many of us the ministers we kill ourselves we kill even our zeal for the ministry because we are carrying more than we are supposed to carry god has not given you ability to carry at a certain level but you want to take everything because you think because the lord has placed me here he will hold me responsible so we want to carry so in order for you not to play your role because god has a role to play don't play your role and you want to play god's role don't kill yourself in fact i have a friend who is always making jokes it's a joke though he will say remember you met the ministry that jesus did it for three years and died <laughs> say you will not finish it for three years you go and leave it wow that's true say you will not do everything alone play your part that's why succession is necessary because if you don't have a successor that means you fail Elijah was a success but Elisha failed even though he had a double portion of the anointing so the anointing doesn't make a leader <laughs> hallelujah hello so when Jesus came he raised leaders he spent three years in imparting in leaders in your leadership in church you will face you will have people who are troublesome People who bring you headache. These are the people I want to address right now. And some of us are here who are under commissions. You in particular, I want to be able to help to pass across a lesson that will graduate you from one level to another fast Amen. without delay. Amen. I don't want you to see as if, oh, he's condemning me now. No, that's not the purpose. It may feel that way, but that's not the intention. Do you understand what I'm saying? The intention is to pass the lesson. I have been there. I learned a lot of lessons. I made a lot of mistakes. The Bible says a righteous man may fall. Not shall fall. May fall. Which means there's a possibility for you to make mistakes. But you must rise again. Hallelujah. So this is an eye-opener. So that if you have made such mistakes you will be able to get correction and adjust and keep moving. Amen. Amen. A leader under a commission is like a pillar. Because where the pillar is not solid, the building will collapse. Bible says, if you give leadership to a novice, he will destroy it. I think in the book of Timothy, Paul talking to Timothy, one of the pastoral epistles, he said, don't make a novice a leader. Yes. Because if you make a novice a leader, he will destroy the work. There are many people who are matured secularly, but in the things of the spirit, they are still babes. Yes. And most of them, most of the times, because of what they have, their pockets, we're in a hurry to give them responsibility they can't carry. And in such cases, you see those people, start, they start influencing the leader. Somebody say error. 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 <laughs> say error. error. <laughs> Have you seen that before? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is it happening where, where you come from? I pray it doesn't happen anymore after today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You don't give a, a novice the position of leadership. We have, even me, I've been there. Not because the person had, but because at the time, I needed people who were going to stand to support what I was doing. Not financially, but who will be there when I need them to take care of one thing or the other. At that particular time, in those days, 
God made me to understand that even the people I believe so much in, they will not be there. There are people, for you to be able to be wise, understand that there are people that God will send your way just to provoke you to take a step in ministry. And after that, their role is up. And if their role is finished and you force them to stay, they become a problem to the ministry. You must be wise and able to descend so that you don't make such people leaders because they just came temporarily to support. So if you see leadership in them because of maybe the gift they have, the same people end up becoming a trouble in what you have labeled to be. Never depend on regiment Christians to be your leaders. That's people who came already made. Because you are setting a time bomb for the ministry. If they are quiet today, tomorrow they will explode. Why? Because they will tell you where I come from. This is not the way we used to do it. Hallelujah. But every ministry is unique. Where I'm coming from, this is not the way in our church. Our pastor taught us that. Yeah, he was already a mature Christian before he came. So you can't make him to stay in your leadership. That person might have been there just to play a role and move. He might have just been there to encourage other people and go. But when he prolongs, when he overdues his stay in the place, especially, you know, it's natural that we love more people, especially people who are already standing. If you don't have people that you raise from babes to maturity, you are still in trouble. Invest your time. Give attention to babes, people who are getting saved, new. Load them with food, spiritual food, and grow them, mature them, because they will hear your voice. Any regiment coming already has voices. <laughs> so your voice will be interrupted in their spirit because there was already a voice they have been hearing. Am I talking? Mm -hmm. That is in John chapter 10, paraphrasing, verse 1 to 5. My sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger they know not. Subsequently, the ready-made Christian will see you as a stranger. But the sheep that you are raising, they know your voice. And in case you came ready-made, they are, I have a man of God who had served under a ministry. He was a, an 